Hello and welcome to the Dragons Day podcast, your home all things Dragons RFC and rugby in the region. I'm Jamie and joining me as always is Gavin Thomas. How are we, Gav? I'm very well, Jamie, very well. I've just returned from Wales in which I was shocked to discover people think they can charge you for a fiver a pint in uh, in certain parts of South Wales, but I'm very well. <laughs> Yes, the price of beer is rocked in that mind. It's not like the old days, Gav, £2 a pint up the valleys and the working <laughs> men's clubs. That's, those days are gone now. The, the prices are going up, I'm afraid. Uh, I was watching my mate's band in Merrifer and uh, four beers was 20 quid. It's outrageous. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the best thing to do is go to Weatherspoons if you can put aside the, the Tim Martin brexit stuff. Uh, I would go to Weatherspoons because they're still cheap in it. And they paid two ninety nine for a pint of Guinness. In Tootin, London. So you can't go wrong for that, can you? As much as I dislike Tim Martin and Weatherspoons, you're not going to get a pint of Guinness for three quid anywhere else in London. So or sometimes you've got to just anywhere make else a deal anywhere. with the devil. Exactly. <laughs> exactly right. Okay, so you can find us on platforms such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Pocket Casts, and the Sports Social Network. And if you like what we do, please subscribe, share, and leave us a good review as it all helps to grow the pod. Right, Gab, this week is a special pod. Why is it a special one? Because it's a victory pod. (laughs) That's right, the Dragons won. Would you believe it? So it wasn't pretty or perfect by any means. Certainly wasn't that, was it? But the Dragons (laughs) climbed off the bottom of the URC with a 2013 win against Zebra Palmer in Newport on Good Friday. And it was a Good Friday for the Dragons. So, Dragons led 13-6 at the break after scoring a pair of tries through uh, their defence, really good pressure defence. Centre and Iron Owen intercepting and wing Jared Ross are racing over after a very good, strong counting record, for, count, uh, record I should say, from Tate Basham, who had a very good game, I should say. Mm, uh, Hooker, Elliot D, he guided a driving line-out over the line early in the second half, but a close-range zebra try by prop Mohamed Hassan made it a needlessly nervy finish. Fly half Will Reed was named player of the match by Sean Holly on Scrum 5, which is slightly surprising because I thought he was going to go to Jared Rosser. The attendance at Ronnie Parade on Friday night was 4,726. So there we are, and Gav Dragons finally got that win they needed. Um, like I said, it wasn't pretty by any means. It was a dogfight. These basement battles usually are. But what was your thoughts on what you saw on Friday night? So it, it was interesting for a number of a uh, number of points, really. So clearly, you were there. I watched on TV. What was the atmosphere like? Because it sounded, it sounded kind of bouncing on TV. It sounded quite lively, and particularly last ten minutes. Yeah, it was. It was pretty good. I have to say. Yeah, a lot of people like the games on a Friday night under the lights. You know, that is a popular sort of uh, schedule kickoff time for a lot of supporters. But yeah, it was pretty good. Like I said, four and a half thousand again, probably. Average crowd now for Dragons, so uh, yeah, it was it was pretty good. I thought. Yeah, it it was it wasn't a pretty game, like you say at all, was it? No. And we we lived on our nerves a little bit, and I you know think Jared, Jared Rosser had a very good game, uh, Tain had a good game, Elliot D had a very good game, but uh, kind of the player that because I've criticised him, so I have to be positive. It was Will Reed. Will Reed actually managed the game very well. I thought. And you know it'd be wrong to uh, to say, having spent the season saying no, his game management was poor. You know, it's, yeah. it's one one spring doesn't make a summer, but uh, uh, but it was decent. It it was decent performance by him. I thought it was, but you have hit the nail on the head. I think it, defensively, it was our most astute performance. Yes, you're just really up in their faces, cutting down the space. Because we lived off their mistakes, we didn't create a lot, but we no, managed. Very optimistic tries, weren't they? I yeah, guess. apart from Elliot, but you know, can we managed? We 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 managed the defence well, and and that period in the second half where we had those two penalties. So we run our line, then we get a penalty, then we get another penalty, and then we're in there for five meters. That was a defining moment of the game for me. Yeah. Absolutely. I think this is a game where the result was more important than the performance. We oh, knew God, we yeah. had to win this game and we knew it was going to be pretty because it never is between these two teams. 
And I don't know about you, Gab, but I actually thought the Dragons were better in defeat against the Bulls than they were in victory against Zebra. I actually thought the performance was better, but obviously you are coming up against a much better team. But um, we got that much-needed win against, you know, an improving Zebra. You know, they had their Italian internationals back, so I was never fully confident of us winning this one. This was always going to be a banana skin, but, you know, we got the job done, and, and that's the important thing. It's about getting mm. over the line, isn't it? That's something the Dragons have got oh, to learn. And we, haven't done to all, we haven't done it all season, and it, it would have been very easy, particularly at the end, to capitulate. Yeah. And we've seen it so many times over the mm. years, Gav, as well, haven't we? That's why we're always very cautious when it comes to watching <laughs> the Dragons. You can never fully relax watching the Dragons. No, I think um, we, you know, can, they all say that we've been a Wales fan, but it's doubly so for us because we've also had a, you know, 20 years of it or so, however long with the Dragons. Yep, too true, too true. You mentioned Will Reed there. Um, I thought that was his best game this season. Yeah. Now, like you, I've spoke about it in the pod, I've spoke about it on the rap podcast as well. Now, look, I've had doubts about his game management and his decision making at times. So you look back to that silly error against the Bulls, you know, he's kicking the ball out of scrum half's hands and you know, little silly things like that. But I think he was really, really good in this game when he controlled the game well, and that's why I want to see more from him. He was really good. Um my man of match, well, my play of the match would have gone to Charles Ross if I chose him because I thought yeah. he was outstanding. I thought oh, that was nice. the best game for the Dragons in a long time. So blister in pace for that breakaway try after a really good counter record for Tate Basham. He was everywhere. He was absolutely everywhere. He was so hungry. He was looking for work. It was a really good performance by Jared. I, I thought he'd scored the push over try. So you know when they scored from the penalty yes. was earlier. <laughs> well I thought yes. Jared had scored it. Because I saw him um, Come out of the rack and he's yes. But the camera panned on him, didn't it? So that's why yeah. I think a lot of people thought he scored no. But um yeah, it was really good to see Jared having that game because you know he is a very good player on his day, he's a really good finisher. So um yeah, that would have been my play of the match, but I'm pleased for Will Reed because I think he needs more games like that. Twing Basham was really good again, Gav, I thought. Um I think since he's come back from Wales. You know, from the Six Nation squad, I think he's really upped it. He looks like someone, as James said on the rap podcast, is playing for a contract. Yeah, whether that'll be with us. Yeah, whether that'll be with us or someone else, I don't know. But he, he does look like he's got his mojo back again. Yeah, I which agree. is really good to see. Uh, Luke Yendel at tight head. It was his first start of Ronnie Parade. I thought he did all right in the scrums. Yeah, we yeah, all yeah, tried I, to get I, Luke on the pod, by the way. I did message him. So hopefully he needs the messages back. Luke, if you're listening, give us a message back. So I'd like to get you on the pod. The, the scrum both... creaked a bit, but it did what he needed to do. We got the ball up, yeah. didn't we? You know? Absolutely. Yeah, we did. Um, great to see Dimitri Arhip make his debut for the Dragons. Scrum looked solid when he came on, Gav, didn't they? I thought. They instantly, you know, it, looked it solid when he came on. Didn't creak when he came on, no. It, no, uh, it didn't. It, it showed right up. But, you know, that's all he does, isn't it? You know, I don't think he moved more than about eight foot in the entire game. No, but he can scrummage, and that's definitely what we need at yeah. Dragons. I found out on Friday night, he's actually been with us since November. Ah, hip. Oh, see. He's been with the Dragons. He's been training with us and doing his rehab. Yeah, we've had him since November. And it's been a bit of a, a joke at the club because they've been putting out videos and photos of him training and other stuff. And he's been in all these photos and videos, but nobody's noticed. So we didn't notice as supporters. BBC, Wales Online, South Wales Argus. Nobody's picked up on the fact that we've had our hip with us <laughs> since the end of the year. So, uh, yeah, he's been with us for a little while. But, Does he? Um, he yeah, he, he must him. live in. He must live in Cardiff, I assume. Probably, yeah. I think a lot of rugby players live in Cardiff, and they pump kind of Penarfa sort of area, really. So, uh, you know, I, I, yeah. I, I've never, I've never been to Moldova, but I imagine Cardiff is slightly nicer than uh, than Chisnell. Yes. I would, I would say so. Yeah, but <laughs> that, that could be a very good pickup for us. Our hip, so he, he'll do he'll yeah. do a job, won't he, till the end of the season? Like, yeah. He's not a young man, is he? He's what, 35, 36? He's 35, yeah. Yeah, yeah he's 35, but uh, there's still plenty of life. And I mean, look at Brock at the Stormers. You know, he's still going strong, isn't he, old Brock? Yeah, he's he's been, been one of the stand-up performers in the uh, scrum, which is ridiculous. How old is he? He must be 40 if he's a day Brock Harris. I think he's 39, isn't he? 
he, he, he looked yes, forty. Uh, he looked forty when he first came to us. Oh yeah, he looks about fifty-five. But he, <laughs> is, uh, he is about thirty-nine, I think. But uh, no, I, I think there's a good couple of years left in our hip. But if he goes well, he probably will get a contract extension. But uh, hopefully now he stays injury-free. That's the key. Yeah. And um, yeah, we need to see what he can do first for the rest of the season. I think. Look, I don't want to be negative about it, Gaff, because. Dragons don't win as many games as we would like them to. No. But <laughs> I, I have to say, I am disappointed that after Elliot's try, we didn't kick on and put the game to bed. Like, we didn't get our bonus point that we really needed. Yes, we got the win, but I would have liked to have seen us develop a killer instinct, which I think is lacking at the Dragons, and I, get I that bonus point. I don't think we were on top enough, though, Jamie. That was, uh, you know, can, apart from Elliot's try... None of that came from a position of control. We and we struggled with them defensively at times, even though it was much better defensive performance. I don't think we were ever in that much control where it was going to be a cakewalk. No, absolutely not. I just think I would have liked to have pushed on a little bit more because you know when Elliot gets that try, you're thinking right, just one more try now, and we get that bonus point. Now would have been a brilliant result for us, but. Um... But and our discipline then let us down, didn't they? Because yes. our discipline slipped at that point, and then we were living off scraps for a while, for about 20 minutes. Well, that's just what I was about to say to you. Then our discipline started, um, you know, to unfortunately go, you know, wayward. And we were making silly errors as well. That led Zebra into the game, and they came away with a losing bonus point which I wasn't too happy with. You know, it would have been better for us yeah. to deny them anything. You know, we are in a scrap to avoid being bottom team in the URC. And us not getting a bonus point and then picking one up. Now, that could be a difference come the end of the season. So I I was just slightly disappointed that we didn't kick on and get that bonus point and Zebra came away with something. Um, also, as well, our attack. I'm still not happy no, with our it's, attack. And it it I, looks had, too flus. I've had issues about this all season. I think Dai Flan and Matt O'Brien really need to work together now to try and get this attack clicking because far too often, it's an awful cliche. We've heard it a million times in rugby, but you hear that cliche, you've got to earn the right to go wide. The problem is we chuck the ball about from side to side. We go wide very quickly our first phase now, but we're not making any hard yards. We no. don't get any go forward. So what are you doing? You just end up going from side to side, but you're not really going anywhere. And several not, times we did that. You're not pulling the fence around and you're not you're not making gaps, which is when the defenders have to move across more sharply because we're not getting over the gain line anywhere near as much as we should. Yeah. That's why so then when we tried to move the ball back across the field, well that's fine. No one's been sucked into a ruck. No one's no one's having to loop round from a position where they're offside or whatever to you know, there's no gaps because our our attack's toothless. Yeah, and there are times where we look good, you know, in, in phases. Mm. And, you know, it, it looks pretty exciting and we're throwing the ball about. It looks nice. But there's other times we're doing it without any goal forward. And then it becomes a bit pointless then because we're not getting out of our own half. And we're not making the hard yards going forward. And we're not getting any territory. And I just think there are times as well when we always try the miracle offload and then someone spills it. And I think, well, no, that's not that's not what's no. needed. Just go through some phases, track it up the middle get some field position, and then maybe go from coast to coast. That, that's been a big frustration for me this season as our attack. Yeah, it it, it looks... It's a bit like the, the problems uh, facing Welsh rugby, really. It, I don't know what the attack is. Yeah. You know, I don't, until this... Until Friday, I didn't really know what the defensive strategy was. But we looked like, yeah, we had one on uh, Friday. We're attacking. I don't know what the strategy is, other than, yeah, you try to be expansive. But expansive is only useful if there's gaps in defence. Yeah. If we're trying to play, if we're trying to create broken field, well, we aren't doing that. Yeah. You, you can see what they're trying to do, though, can't you, the Dragons? Yeah. You can see what they're trying to do in the attack, but it's whether they've got the skill set for it. And also as well, they've got, as I said earlier, they've got to make the hard yards. They've got to start tracking up and getting more field position because going from coast to coast, side to side, without any goal forward, it's just utterly pointless. I think you might as well kick the ball. You, you, yeah. For me, I, I'd rather see him kick the ball and try to get... Uh, know, there was a couple of times, position. a couple of times on Friday, where both Jared and Rio got the ball, but they were stood still. Yeah, I noticed that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it was, it, it's, it's, it's unbelievably pedestrian. 
yeah, yeah I agree. God, you know, I teach under tens not to stand still to catch a ball. You know, it's <laughs> yes, we shouldn't absolutely. be doing it. You know, shouldn't be seen at that level. But no, quite right. On the positive, just picking up on what you said, then we know that we haven't got defence coach, and my God, we've spoken about this enough times. Defensively. Very good. I was mm. impressed with our defence. I thought it was gritty. I thought it showed a lot of character. We worked incredibly hard. Did it surprise you how good we were defensively? Yeah, it, it, it looked different because it looked just quite aggressive. Mm. It was, uh, you know, kind of, not, quite, not quite blitz, but it wasn't that aggressive. But it was, it was like an, we were shutting down any space. We were meeting them in attack constantly. We were pressuring and We were causing issues at the line-out as well, at the rack as well which we've looked really lightweight at the rack at times this season. But yeah. Taino, I've been critical of, was really solid at the rack, but everybody was giving her a he go. Mm. And Sean Lonsdale as well, I thought, put in a, a really yeah. big shift. I know that's someone we all not uh, entirely sold on, but I thought he, he put in a real big he, shift. He's fine at second row. I just don't see him as a six, but he did what I would expect a second row to do a lot on Friday, which is just it rucks hard. Mm. Yeah. Kai Evans, our boy Kai, he struggled with a boot, didn't he? I thought those two misconversions yeah. were I thought that was good quite poor stuff. by his standards. Yeah. I, yes, I did say the same to my dad. I thought, I hope those misfights don't come back to bite us on the backside. I was quite concerned about that. And I expected Kai to kick those with his eyes closed, to yeah, be honest. Yeah. But uh, not his best game. Also, Aaron Wainwright had a very quiet game by his high standards. I thought, no, he has had a pretty drain in Six Nations. So maybe that's why, you know... Maybe you could do now a couple of weeks best, which you'll get, of course, because we're not in Europe. But oh. it was an unusually quiet performance. He, he didn't carry Ireland. with any kind of intensity, I thought. You know, it's mm. uh... yeah. No, I agree. Okay, so Dragons have won. But like we said, it wasn't a great game. It was low on quality, but this was all about the result, and we got the result that we needed. And we're for now, we are off the bottom of the table. So um, it's good, Gav, isn't it? You know, it's it's all about winning, and we did that. And any final thoughts before we move on? Well, I'd, I'd, uh, it probably sounds like I'm being critical. I'm not critical. I'm not critical because I was super pleased. You know, I was overjoyed to see us win, and I was overjoyed yeah. to see some of that kind of grittiness. But we've got to maintain it now. Hmm. The next game, the defense has to look like that. Our next game is away at Benetton, which is going to be very tough. tough. It's a tough yeah, place tough to game. go. Yeah, they they doing very well. I'm making no assumptions there. You know, well, of the games we've got left now, Cornet, Scarlet, they're the games to be. Well, I'm going to hold your fire about that because i got a question to, to ask you. Well, one of our listeners have sent us a question, so I'll, uh, I'll get your thoughts on the running just a bit later on. Right, okay then, so that's that done then. As we said, victory pods, dragons win, great stuff. Now it's time for this week's Gwent Rugby Roundup. So what's been the latest then, Gav? What's happening? Well, it, it was a it was a good weekend for both of us, really, because clearly the Dragons won. But yes. our our respective uh, Premiership sides won as well. Newport uh, beat Slandavery 24-6, which fantastic uh, result, put them top of the Premiership. Yeah. And, good uh, game, but, that was. Did yes, you watch no, it? It was on I, S4C. It was really I did, good. yes. No, it was excellent. Reinhard Landman, former Dragon, <laughs> who, of course, friend of the pod. He had a play with a match. He was really good. Oh, God, I bet he's hard work to stop. Jesus, just watching him. Just... <laughs> I saw him Friday nights down at Ronnie Parade, and he's still a unit. He still was. Oh, yeah. You could see that. Uh, he was on the pod. His arms were filling my screen. Yes. The other thing and, I want to say, just before you move on, sorry, Shea Hope. Dragon scrum half was excellent, and he's bulked up as well. Yes, he, so um, yeah, I he thought really he looked good. really, he looked really sharp, and I, I liked him to snipe him around rucks and this. Yes, you know that's land every side decent. You know, lots of good players. Yeah, there. yeah, it was a good game. Did you notice on the first half they absolutely destroyed the Newport scrum? Yes. Been, you're thinking, uh oh. But the second half, it was the complete opposite. They made some front row changes, and then it was them who was dominating. But what was it? Land of we went, what was it, 12, 13 games in a row, something like that? You know, yeah. they've had a fantastic run. They're a very good team. So it's a brilliant win for Newport. That was L- last team, team they the lost Dragons to was Ebervale. They lost to Ebervale yeah. in October, I think. That was the last time they've lost. 
So that's yeah. a, a fantastic win. And then Eberville won 24-17 away to Swansea. Good win. So, so Newport are top, uh, land every second. Uh, Newport, land every and Eberville are all assured playoff places. Brilliant. And, and Pontypool uh, didn't play this weekend, but Pontypool are in a fifth. It's been a good season, hasn't it, for the Gwen Clubs and the... Uh, They've done very well. You know, my, my fear is, we'll do whatever we're calling it, the elite competition or whatever it's called. But what's yes. that going to look like? And what's, you know, how is that going to help our regions? But that's another another chat for another time. Indeed. So in, in the Championship East, uh, Bedwas lost 24-33 at home to Cross Keys and Penalta lost 22-37 at home to Newbridge. In the Division 1, Blaine Avon beat Risker 48-30. I don't know if you've ever played at Blaine Avon. That's another not no. easy place to play. It's, <laughs> it, it's cold and windy. Yeah, And, and if you said, oh, I'm, I'm playing their summer tournament in August, it's still cold and windy. It's, well, it's always like an incredibly hard place to go. Uh, Monmouth, good win for them. They beat Dallas 31-26 at home. And uh, your former side, NSD, beat uh, Abergavenny 53 20. Good stuff for them. The Abergavenny, though, not having a good season. Uh, into Division 2 East, uh, Newport High School Old Boys beat Croce Killiog 47 19. And Oakdale beat Killian 34 12. Into Division 3 East, a uh, tightly fought game in another very difficult place to go and play. Uh, Nandy Glow lost 22-23 at home against Abertussog. Another cold and windy place all year round. Mm. Division 4 East, Blackwood Stars beat Whitehead 21-15. Gwynavid uh, beat Bedwelty 36-12. Havodanis uh, lost 17-34 at home to Crickowl. New Panteg beat uh, Betos, uh, or lost, sorry, at 26 27 at home to Betos. And St. Julian's High School Old Boys lost 21 26 home to New Tradiga. And then into Division 5 East, West Mon lost uh, 7 53 at home to Hollybush. Eastern Valley's clash there. And in Division uh, 6 East, Trinant lost 15 0 at home to the uh, Tradiga Iron Sides. So not lots of rugby. But uh, lots of away wins. Yeah, clearly the stuff. home team. Clearly the home teams were all uh, Easter drinking and uh, ready. <laughs> Great stuff. Okay, thank you for that, Gav. Let's move on now to a bit of news. So all this week, Dragons are announcing hashtag Next Gen signings. So you say young players who are signing new contracts. With the club, and the first one that's been announced is young centre Joe Westwood. So he signed a three year senior contract with the Dragons. The 20 year old who can also play in the back three made his debut for the Dragons off the bench against the Sharks in January, and then he made a first start against Ulster in Belfast. I really like the look of this uh, guy, Gavi. Mm-hmm. He looks quite the player, and he's a big lad as well, isn't he? He is. He's a big lump, but he doesn't look like a centre when you first see him. It's the no. plan. Now, have they suggested that this this is going to be regular uh, first team rugby, or is he still going to play at Newport or what? One of the other uh, feeder clubs. I think he'll he'll be a mixture of the two. I I think he'll get a lot more game time for the Dragons next season, but I could still see him playing rugby for Newport. And I think that's a good way to... He just needs to be playing rugby, mm. whether it's for the Dragons or even for Newport in a premiership. Right? There's no point having these talented kids not playing rugby, just sitting around if not selected. So if he's not, you know, in the Dragons squad, get him playing for, for Newport. But um, I think I think that's what we should be doing anyway. It's, you know, whoever's not in the yeah. 23, they should be playing premiership rugby on the weekends. Yeah, Absolutely. So this is what Di Flangan said. It's great news that Joe has signed a long-term deal with us as we firmly see him as a future 13 for our club. He's a big man and a great athlete, built to be a modern-day rugby player, and he has a fantastic skill set from his time playing in multiple positions in junior rugby. Joe is an exciting prospect for this club, and we look forward to seeing how he develops and pushes on in the coming season. So he's a big part of the Dragons' plans going forward, and I do think we'll see a lot more of him 
but he's, he's already had a three day game time, hasn't he? You know, mm-hmm. since he's come back into the fold. He's had bad luck with injury as well, Joe West, when he spent a couple of seasons out, but uh, they they do think a lot of him at the Dragons. A line breaking 15 is what we need, you know. It's uh, mm. like Mason, Gr- Mason Grady type of character. Yeah, and big men. We haven't got many of those in Wales either. No. You know, he is a big guy. So, um, yeah, pretty good news. So, there will be another announcement later today. But as we're recording this, we won't get to know who that is. But all this week, they'll be announcing um, new uh, re-signings of the young talent, which is a it's pretty good marketing too, actually. It's good PR, isn't yeah. it? You know, showing the club that we're building for the future and you're re-signing your exciting young talent. And we've got to keep hold of young talent. Yes, it's important that we sign quality players. We're going to help to push the Dragons on, but you've got to keep hold of your best quality young players. We don't want them going to England and elsewhere. No. You, know, you want to try and keep them out of the English game, don't you? you know? mm. No offence to the yeah. English game, but... Uh... <laughs> No, but we've lost too much talent, haven't we, to, to England, so we need to keep hold of our, our young talent in Wales. Yeah. So, yeah, promising news, really good stuff. In other news, then, David Buttress has been named CEO of Ovo Energy. Are you an Ovo Energy customer, Gav? I am not. I am not. Oh, right. Okay. Well, I am I, an Ovo Energy customer. I, I might be. I don't know my wife's my, my wife deals with that <laughs> side of the bills. Yeah, so Ovo has 4 million energy customers in the UK, placing it third in the market behind British Gas and Octopus Energy. So I'm just wondering, if I oh, see wait. Buttress next, are we going to get a discount for Dragon Season ticket holders? <laughs> if I'm an Ovo Energy customer now, can I have a, a discount off my energy bills? Because they are going up at a rate of not. So I, I'm going to suggest know, probably nice. not. No, uh, no, probably not, no. Shame, really, isn't it? <laughs> good, good for him, though, you know, like a man who knows his way, yeah, he certainly knows his way around the world of business, doesn't he? Yeah, but how does he get time to do all these roles, Gav? Because he's got his venture business in the 83 North and he's got the Dragons and, you know, he's got his fingers in so many pies. I just wonder how these businessmen, these high flying businessmen, find time to do and run all these businesses, well, you know? A mate of mine who I run my rugby club with is a managing director of a, an IT company. And if he goes into work twice a week, it's miraculous. So I don't know, you know. <laughs> no, but fair play to him. Congratulations to him, we should say as well. It's, well um, absolutely, it's a big yeah, you know. Him, isn't it? And and you know, he's been a big uh, advocate of the pod as well. You know, he's uh... he has. He absolutely has. He's offered to come back on as well because somebody got in touch with us. We'll, we'll come on to it now on Mailbox. But he was asking questions, and I replied saying. That needs to be answered by David Buttress, not us. David uh, saw that and he said he's happy to come back on and answer more questions. So, and, and it's great to have, isn't it? You know, a chairman of Dragons who's so passionate and willing to engage with us. He doesn't have to, and I think it's good. No, to, ab- to absolutely. He doesn't need to do this at all. But uh, I, I think, you know, it's it's good that not only from him, but from the club as a whole, we've had recognition of what we're doing. Because yeah, it's it's very much an amateur uh, affair, but uh, it's good that the club's kind of buying into it too. And excuse me, we've been quoted in Wales Online as well. We have. We're, we're kind of a big deal now. This pod is growing. <laughs> Wales Online are, are quoted us. <laughs> Did make me laugh when I saw that. <laughs> well, they, they were quoting Jamie Ringer. They were, but uh... yes. Oh, also, while we're at it, we need to clarify something here. When you said about the line breaks, so a couple of people did get in touch with me to say that Wales average four line breaks per game, not ah, that was the whole tournament. Yeah. So you you got asked that just a little bit incorrect, but I mean it's still not great. Don't get me wrong, but it, it was four line breaks per game, not throughout the tournament. Still not enough. No, no, not at all. But just to clarify that, yeah, well, correction. But but I was part. wrong by five hundred percent, so uh, I will uh, yeah. accept that. <laughs> Um, that's all the news I have uh, from a Dragon's point of view. Now, let's look what's inside our mailbox. So we asked our lovely listeners for their comments, thoughts and questions. Now, we've had a couple of questions regarding the coaching setup. So Ellis Parry gets in touch and he says it'd be great for you guys to discuss the coaching situation. Uh, Gareth Leclerc also asked, what changes do we expect for the bathroom staff? 
whilst we are in need of a defence coach, our attack has gone backwards this season, in my opinion. Yes, quite right, as we've yeah. talked about. So, what do we know about the coaching setup? Well, we know that um, there's going to be a refresh. Oh. We know we're going to get a defensive coach. We don't know who yet. I haven't seen or heard any names mentioned in terms of a new defence coach. So we don't know who at the moment, but we know we are having a defence coach. We know that Luke Navaway is going to be leaving the Dragons. We know that Methin Davis is going to be leaving. So that's two forwards coaches there that's going to be leaving. We know that Dan Bow, the head of performance, um, or the water boy, whatever you want to prefer to call him, he's going to Georgia. So he's going to join the, co- the Georgian national team as part of their coaching setup. So it looks like we are going to have a, a refresh of the coaching. And to be honest with you, as we've talked about a few times this season ago, it's much needed. I think we need fresh voices now and yeah. new blood in our coaching team, don't so, we? So Meffin was set piece, set piece coach, wasn't he? And so uh, Meffin concentrated on scrums. Yeah. And Luke Narraway concentrated on the lineup. So we had two forwards coaches, but Meffin was concentrating on scrums and set piece, and Narraway was focusing on, on the lineups. Yeah, both yeah. needs an overhaul anyway. You know, it's... Uh... Yeah. And I, I don't know about the attack. I don't know if they're going to persist with Matt O'Brien. Um, like I said, I'm really not happy with our attack at the moment. You know, I, I know that uh, he, he's kind of a young coach, isn't he? And he's combining that role with um, playing for Newport RFC. But uh, it remains to be seen whether we have an attack coach I, or not. I, I would I, like I, one. I don't see how you can do it. I, I don't see... We're he does, though. He absolutely yeah. does. Oh, no, I know he does, but we're a professional club. We need a professional setup. It doesn't feel yeah. professional. I agree. I do agree with that. But it's it's the money issue, isn't it? So, of course. Um, of course. Yeah. But yes, we can expect changes. But like I said, there's, there's no names as of yet uh, in terms of who's coming into the coaching centre, but we know who's going. So, um, yeah, that's when we're going to have to... Well, we should start some ridiculous rumours. Yeah, we saw Sean Edwards in uh, in Hyper Value. I don't think Hyper Value is still there, but you know, <laughs> Sean Edwards was in Friars Walk yeah. having a coffee with David Buttress. <laughs> <laughs> that to be a fine thing, wouldn't it? He very nearly became our head coach, Sean Edwards. Remember that when he was linked yes. to be an our interim head coach? I often think about that. Would it have ever worked? I don't know. I mean, our defense would have been very good. He I know did a good that, job but, of uh, wasps. He came in at Cardiff as a consultant as well, didn't he? To help yeah. over their defence. They did all right there within the Challenge Cup. So, uh, yeah, what could have been? Yeah, what could have been? Okay, so Matt Williams, he's asking, do you guys think we will catch the Scarlets or will we finish bottom Welsh region again? Now, let's talk about the running because you mentioned earlier, right? I'll read to you the run-ins of each team and I want you to tell me who you think got the toughest run-in and if we can finish above the Scarlets, okay. right? So, our next four games are this. Benetton away. Connacht at home. Stormers at home. Ospreys away. Scarlets away at Judgment Day. Right? That's the Dragons running. Now, let's have a look at the Scarlets running. They got Edinburgh away. They've got Sharks at home. They've got Ulster at home. Zebra away. And then they got the Dragons. So, who has got, in your opinion, the toughest running out of those two clubs? Scarlets. You think the Scarlets? Yeah. Do you think we'll finish above the Scarlets? No. 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 (laughs) (laughs) I I think we'll beat them. Uh, Yeah. The thing is, the three winnable games there for me. So who's winnable it, then out, out of those games then I, I've mentioned to you from the Dragons? Honour to Tom. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Osprey's away. Not super winnable. But it's not a million miles. You know, we can beat Osprey's on our day. Maybe not the way they're playing at the minute. And mm. Scarlet's. Yeah, we, uh, we aren't beating Stormers unless they, no. decide, unless they decide to send their fourths and even then we'll struggle. And yeah. we aren't beating Benetton away. So 
Scarlets, they aren't beating Edinburgh away. Again, mm. Sharks, it really depends on what happens with what Sharks team turns up. Yeah. And you have Zebra away, we know that's a tough game. And Scarlets yeah, have looked worse. Scarlets have looked worse than us. Mm. They've got but they've got a better squad than us on paper, but they've looked worse as a team. Yeah. I, I did sympathise with them getting hammered by Glasgow because that's Dragon supporters know what that's like. We've had some real pastings from Glasgow. You know, you think back to 60 points to three back in 2012 or 2013, whatever it was, obviously. <laughs> that 70 plus point defeat in Europe last season. Yeah, they were a bloody good team, Glasgow, and well, they are good plus. Like, they will cut you to shreds if you allow it. Well, and uh, they were cut. very, very poor, Scarlet's very Oh, yeah, exceptionally. Cardiff looked very good, though, I thought. Yeah, you got to take a hat lost. off to her because they're not winning two games. Losses. Two losses, but uh, they did well. Yeah, they're not winning games. They've only won three games. So I should point out that the Dragons have won more games than Cardiff in all competitions this season. Yeah. We won three in the league and one in Europe. I know the caveat is, you know, Cardiff fans say, well, we played in the Champions Cup, fine. But the stats are that we've won more games than Cardiff. But yeah. they're competitive. And what I admire about them, which is what we don't do enough, and they bang on about this a lot on both podcasts, on here and on that, they pick up losing bonus points. So if it's, if it's games where you know you're going to struggle to win, you, you've got to come away with something. And we don't do that enough. We don't pick up enough losing bonus points. So that's why I want us to do a lot more when we go and play those bigger and better teams. But but we've got to be more competitive because we, we don't look at the races yes. when we play a Munster, a Glasgow... Uh, a Bulls, you know, we don't look like we're at the races against those teams. The Lions, mm. whoever. Yeah. So you're saying that we won't finish above the Scarlets and you think we'll finish bottom wash region, is it? Yeah, so I'll be yeah, honest, probably. you, is that what you think? I, I, d- I do, yeah. yeah. I would agree. How many points are they ahead of us? Only one. Uh, maybe, maybe. It really depends on what Sharks team turns up. Yeah. So the bottom four of the table is quite interesting now. So in last 16th, you've got Zebra. They're on 15 points. Then it's us in 15th. We got 15 points. Scarlets are in 14th. They have 16 points. The Sharks have leapt up now. They're in 13th position and they're on 18 points. I mean, I, I've been saying for a little while that sooner or later the Sharks are going to start winning games and climb up the table. That was always going to happen. There's too much quality in that team for them not to start winning games. But um, it's quite an interesting battle, isn't it, down at the bottom, the basement battle, as they call yeah. it. So um, it's perfectly possible we can overtake the Scarlets. Oh, yeah. Will I they win another so. game this season? I think that's the question, isn't it? As bad as Scarlets are, and we're struggling, will they win another game this season? Yeah. I probably think they will, but... But you could argue there's a case that both teams could win one or more, or both teams could lose all of them bar against each other. It could come down to Judgment Day. Yeah. That that would be quite interesting, wouldn't it? That'd be good from, like, you know, the, the commercial angle, you know, who finishes bottom wash read, you know, if it's a shootout between Scarlets and Dragons, I think that would generate a little bit of interest. Because Ospreys yeah. will get the Welsh Shield, won't they? Oh, yes. The, the, yeah. the vitally important Welsh Shield. I'd love us to win the Welsh Shield. The hub cap, as it's known as, the hub cap of stickers. I would kill for the Dragons to win now, honestly. I would. It's something, isn't it? You know, It's an ugly trophy, but it's something. So, uh, yeah. Okay, thank you for that, Matt. Stephen Thompson, he gets in touch and he asks, is Ting Basham staying? Well, Stephen, the answer is, I don't know. I was, how long's a piece of string? I honestly don't know. I hope so. Because I think Tane has been very good, as I said, since he's come back from the Wales squad. He looks hungry again. You know, it looks like he's got his mojo back. His counter rucking was really good on the weekend. You know, that's an area of his game that he does need to improve on. We know he's a good ball carrier, but he's got to do the dirty work as well. I'd really like Tane to stay. You know, I, I don't see why he'd want to be going to the Scarlets, if I'm being honest, because they're in all sorts of trouble off the field. They've recently announced a restructure. And all they've done is just move people sideways. They haven't really taken accountability. You know, there's a lot of talk about John Daniels moving on. You know, a lot of fans aren't happy with John Daniels. They wanted him gone from the club. They've just moved him sideways to another position. So there's all sorts of problems there. 
We know the Saracens are interested in Tay. Now, that's understandable. If he did leave to go to the Saracens, I think most people would say, well, fair enough, because yeah. Saracens are a very big club. They've got rich history. You know, the get it up. If the Gallagher Premiership is, is a good league and it'd be a new, fresh challenge for him, he'd be playing Champions Cup rugby. I get that. I don't really understand why he wanted to move to Scarlets, as I said, but I I hope he stays. I don't know about you, Gav. Would you like to see him stay? Yeah, I, I, I didn't at the start of the season because I thought he wasn't pulling his weight, but since uh, the Six Nations, he seems to be actually doing what you want a back row forward to be doing. So uh, I'm, I'd be happy if he stayed. And, I, you know, without sounding one-eyed and provincial, why would you go to Scarlets at the minute? They're in mm. a worse position than us. I, I think off the field, we're in a much better position yeah. than the Scarlets. Yeah, you can argue they are a better team. And, you know, the league They've says that. We're not squad. too far behind them. Yes, they are. Yeah. But, like I said, I talked to Lee from Rap and New Year stuff. I don't think it's a very well-run club at the moment. The fans are furious. They're not happy with what's going on there. Um, there are certain people at the board that aren't taking responsibility. You know, so um, yeah, they, they've got issues with Scarlet. So I'd be surprised and a bit disappointed if he went there. But it's his choice at the end of the day. There are negotiations between Tain and the club at the moment. So fingers crossed that I would like him to stay. And um, I guess we'll just wait and see. But is he staying? Who knows? Who knows? We'll, we'll so, find out, won't we? We soon will. Richard Dixon gets in touch. He's asking, who's out of contract at the end of the season? Will Jordan Williams, C.O. Tomkinson, Leon Brown and Bradley Roberts still be here? And then he asks, do we need them? So I think out of those, I would have liked to have kept C.O., I'll be honest, yeah. uh, because I still don't really think we've seen the best of him. He's been unlucky with injury and he is quite a physical player. I like C.O. a lot, but he is going to be leaving. I would imagine. Um, yeah, Jordan Williams, I've... I think, should leave, if I'm being brutally honest. I mean, Jordan was a great player for us for the first couple of years, but I think his time is up now. Leon Brown, I think it's probably for the best if he moved on. Bradley Roberts, I again, I'd love to keep Bradley. Um, we're big fans of him on the pod. Um, I don't know if he'd be with us. That's purely because of budget. We, we, we're going to accept we're going to have to look some big things. So, do we need them? I mean, it would be nice to keep Sue and Bradley, but what do you think about to those? Names I, I, I totally agree with I totally agree with you on what you said. I think Leon, what does he bring? You know, he plays four games a year, broken the rest. We're playing for Wales. So don't really bring a lot, I'm sure. And he's a, you know, he can make money in England. Let him do that. I, I don't think we need to worry about him. Yeah, Jordan uh, is fine. <laughs> you know, we've got plenty of players who can do that job better. And yeah, it's a CEO brings a bit of physicality in the centres, which we lack. Be good yeah. to see him for another season. And Bradley is a good option. He's you know, he's mm-hmm. an international player. He's not as good as Elliot, but he does he's certainly the next best cab off the rank. You know, as much as we like uh we like Jimbo, you know, he's uh he's not Friend to the, the pod, James Benjamin. Yeah. yeah. He's not in the same place as Bradley, I don't think so. I don't forget we got young Brody Coglin pushing yeah. through as well, and I like him quite a lot. I think he's got a lot of potential. Yeah, he looks decent as well. But you know, Bradley is a better yeah. player than both those currently. We're going to see a few names leave the Dragons. I think some, you know, high-profile players. Um, I he's understand going... Sean Lonsdale is probably going to leave as well. Um, Bertrandu is going to leave. Max Clark is likely to leave. I, I, I'm fine with that. We talked about Max Clark yeah. before. I don't think he made the impact they wanted him no. to have. He's played okay for Cardiff when he has played, but he's injured again now. You know, and I think when you go Westward and Ivan Owen and Harry Ackerman, you know, coming through now, you go got to weigh it up with him. So, uh, yeah, there's going to be some big name depart- departures, I think. And there might be one or two players who we don't want to see leave no. the Dragons. So long as they'll end up in the English Championship, I imagine. He you think so? Like, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Well, three, I think we will be in the market for a back rower, though. I think we will look for sort yeah. of that back rower slash lock hybrid. You he's know? from the you North know, West, think... isn't he, Sean Lonsdale? He's North Walian, but I think he is North Walian. Uh, yeah. But I think his yeah. heritage is North West England, round it. Yeah. I, I was it? thinking about this, right? If we're going to look for a back rower, because we we talked about this in our group chat on that. Harley said about um, Will Boyd would be a good pickup for the Dragons, a good signing. 
I was like, yeah, but I tell you, do I think it'd be good with someone like um, Shane Lewis Hughes from Cardiff? I'd be looking at him because he's a really good back rower. I he like can him play lock play. if we needed yeah. to. I think that would be the kind of player that Dragons need to look at. You know, if we're losing Tain as well, Mike, we are going to, you know, need a, a back rower. Never mind. We don't know what's happening with Ollie. I'm not sure his contrast state is. I'd be looking at someone like Shane Lewis Hughes. Yeah, that'd be a good sign in. Mm. Yeah, someone like that. But uh, yeah, that's where we are with the with the contract stuff. Um, let's have a look at Twitter then. So, Ulfstar126594. That's a catchy username, isn't it? He's asking, what's the position with Gonzalo Bertrandu? Is he out injured for the rest of the season? So, Bertrandu is currently out injured with a wrist injury. Is he going to be out for the rest of the season? I don't know. But that's where he is at the moment. He injured his wrist in training, I understand. And yeah, he's injured. We've barely seen the guy. I, I like Bridge, you know, but we've twice barely season, seen him. Hasn't he? Something like that, two, three times maybe. Yeah. So uh, I don't know if you'll see him again. I, I'd like him to get one more game in before he goes because I think he's been a good player for us. But with a World Cup, like I said, this season, we've barely seen the guy. So shame, really. And then Richard Jones gets in touch and he says, if the Dragons could afford him and he wanted to come back to Wales, then Reese Patchell would be an excellent sign-in and would be superb in helping Will redevelop. There was talk of him joining before he went to Super Rugby, so you never know. Reese Patchell. Now, from what I understand, the Dragons are still trying with Reese Patchell. There have been conversations. They're not giving up on him. So... Maybe watch this space, I would say. But how would you feel about Rhys Patchell? That's well, a I like, I like, I like Pat. I've always liked Pat as a player. Mm. You know, he's but not is my he another... 10, but he's... Uh... But is he another risky signing, given his injury record? Are these the kind of players we need to steer clear of, the ones with really bad injury records? Or do you think he's worth picking up, that he's worth taking off? Well, he would massively improve our, our options at 10, wouldn't he? Yeah, you know, it's uh, he is a good player, no matter what you know <laughs> how you look at it. He is a good player. Injuries and yeah, just wrong place, wrong time have kept him out of the Wales team a bit. Mm. And I know you're yeah. a bigger fan of Sam Davis than me, but he is you know several cuts above Sam Davis. I like Sam Davis. He got lost it from Dragon supporters. I think he was what we needed at the time. Um... I'm a big fan of it. And he is going well in the Pro D Dirt. I know you might say, well, it's only Pro D Dirt, but it's a competitive league. He looks a completely different player out there, doesn't it? But it does help having a strong pack in front of your mind, doesn't it? You know, when you've got yeah. a strong pack in front of you, as a fly off, you're given a free ride, a bit more, yeah. you know, freedom. And he never really had that. He was never behind a strong pack of the Dragon Sam Davis. So there is that element. No, he, he, he's got a bit more of an armchair ride, doesn't he? But, you know, I think mm. Pat would be a good sign in. But like you say, yeah. what do you want to come here? That's I know we've been in conversation with him. Where, where is he in? Is he is he at the Blues? No, he's not the Blues. He's at the Highlanders. Highlanders, yeah. You know, I'm not sure I'd want to leave New Zealand to live in Newport, but uh... <laughs> you wouldn't have to live in Newport. You'd probably move back to Cardiff, I'm guessing. Oh, but, that's uh... true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm making yeah. the assumption. Yeah, but I know they have been trying with Reese Patchell, so like I said, uh, watch this space. I'll tell you a funny story I got told on Friday night by somebody at the Dragons. So we were in negotiations not long ago with Garth Anscom. He was all going very well, apparently. He was looking good. And then he turned around and said, no, I'm not going to you know, join. He, he pulled out of the move. And he told them that he wanted to leave Welsh rugby and go further afield. And then he signed for Gloucester. Yes. <laughs> Which is just like well, half hour, further... 40 minutes away. So, uh, it yeah, is, it true is, story. It is, it is further afield. Yeah, but <laughs> they thought he yeah. meant sort of, you know, playing in Super Rugby Japan. And then he said, we returned around, he'd now to move to Gloucester. So, uh, yeah, so, yeah, he could have been a dragon. Uh, he could have been a dragon. He's, uh, yeah, they, they did talk. They were the contract well, negotiations. For he'd have been a great player. If he was fit. Yeah. That, that's the other thing. He's, he's, there's so many players in Welsh rugby who are really talented, but never fit, isn't it? You know? 
and we need to stay away from those now. I think as a club, we we've given far too many chances to injured players, and we we just need someone who's doable and robust to play week in week out, don't we? Tell you I really like Sasan, but he's super injury prone, and he'll never come to us. Ellis Jenkins. Oh, I know. Yeah, that that'll be another good signing, wouldn't it? Oh, you know, that's what I mean. That's sort of Ellis Jenkins, you know, Shane Lewis Hughes. I, I, I yeah. would take a card back, bro. I, I really would. Thomas Young would be brilliant. Can you imagine Thomas Young at the Dragons? Yeah, he'd do a great job for us. Mm. Yeah, they've they got really good back, bro. Uh, and, you know, Newport's nicer than Cardiff, as we know. So, you know. Of course it is. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And they've gone back hands, they've gone to the pub and the Mavinger. So, what, what more do you want, I guess? Absolutely. What more do you want? Yeah. That is it then. Um, there's no more letters in the mailbox, and I think that's it for this week, Gav. Unless there's anything else you'd like to talk about? No, I think that's covered everything. Yeah, so it's a shorter one than usual. Uh, this week we are hoping to get a guest on when we return. We are playing Benetton, so I'd like to try and get someone to talk about Benetton to come on the pod and have a chat about them. You know, what's made them so successful and their, and their progression, really. Because they are an interesting team, Benetton, now, aren't they? You know, when you think about a few years ago, you know, oh, they were yeah. a bit of a laughing stock. They didn't win a game. And now, all of a sudden, they won the best teams in the URC. They've invested heavily. And it's going to be a very difficult game for the Dragons, that one. So, um, yeah, I'll try and uh, get in contact with uh, one of the Italian podcasts, I think, and uh, get someone on to have a chat about Benetton. But until then, that's it then. Uh, until then, we shall speak again. And we'll be back with the Benton preview. Gal, thank you as always for joining me. No Until problem. next time, take care. Ta-ra. Bye all.